I wanted to run through a few narrations where the Prophet talks about the tactics of shaitan because they're actually incredibly empowering. Every time the Prophet talks to us about the impact of the shayateen, the Prophet gives us a way to overcome them so that we understand in the ibadi, laysa lak alayhim sultan. As for my servants, you have no control over them except for those that willingly follow you. First and foremost, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily, shaitan is lying overweight over the heart of the child of Adam. He's waiting right over your heart to see when he can get in. He's waiting for the opportunity to ambush. And when is that ambush? That ambush is when you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you remember Allah, he sinks away and he has to retreat. But the moment that you forget, shaitan will devour your heart. And that is al-waswas al-khannas, the whisperer and the one who retreats. He waits for the moment that you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he can penetrate. So obviously, when you remember Allah, then he doesn't have much of a place to go. And every night before you sleep, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that every night when you sleep, gets on top of your head and he ties these three knots. And as he ties these three knots, he strikes the place of every knot. And as he ties every knot, he says, Shh, You have a long night ahead of you. You work so hard today. Sleep, sleep. Make sure that you go deep into your sleep. Go ahead and sleep and sleep deep, deep, deep so that you don't wake up for prayer. If you wake up and you remember Allah, one of the knots comes loose. And then if you make wudu, another knot comes loose. And if you pray, then the last of the three uqad, the last of the three knots comes loose. And the Prophet said, فَأَصْبَحَ نَصِيطًا طَيِّبَ النَّفْسِ وَإِلَّا أَصْبَحَ خَبِيثَ النَّفْسِ كَسْلًا So you wake up fresh, pure souled, energetic spirit. You undid all three knots because you remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you did wudu and you went to the prayer. And you know the difference between the days you miss Fajr and the days that you don't. Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah says, the main tool of shaitan is procrastination. Wait, he didn't tell you don't pray when you went to sleep at night. He said, prolong your sleep, put off your prayer. It's okay, the time will come. And that is how shaitan corrupts all of our acts of worship. When we know that worship is important and that we have to do what we have to do, then shaitan can merely mess with our priorities. He can merely mess with us by making us procrastinate. And isn't that the cause of failure for a person, right? In their personal affairs as well? A sense of urgency is put off of you. And that is a disease. We know we're committing a sin. I know I have the sin. It's not as bad as that person's sin. Everyone else does it anyway. It's okay, I can wait. Maybe next Ramadan. This Ramadan, I didn't really feel it inside. Who told you you're going to live to see the next Ramadan? Who told you you're going to live to see the next Jum'ah, the next day? But in your mind, it's subconscious. Yeah, I know I could be doing this obligation a little bit better, but you know, Alhamdulillah, at least I'm doing something. I'm kind of doing this obligation, so I can put off fulfilling it later on. Besides, look at everyone else around me. I have time, procrastination. So you keep putting stuff off, putting stuff off, putting stuff off. And then listen to this. What is the connection between the whispers and the knots? and the personal and the interpersonal. Meaning there is a deep connection between that and family and community as well. Listen to this narration. It's in a Tirmidhi Jabir who says that the Prophet said, Shaitan has given up hope that he can take people who pray to Allah and make them pray to him. So what does he do instead? He busies you with each other. Let me create discord and fitna amongst them so that they can fight each other because they're not worshiping me. But if they fight each other, at least they'll be too busy then to worship Allah. And that will give me more entrance to penetrate. And SubhanAllah, that's where you see the incitement between his ibad, between the servants of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And have you ever gone to sleep at night? And you wonder like, why am I suddenly getting all these bad thoughts about my family? Why am I suddenly thinking like I'm getting mad about something? As I'm in bed, I'm just starting to think about that. You know, I'm thinking about, I can't believe she said that to me. I can't believe he did this. And you're sitting at night and you're boiling. Listen to this narration. Abu Umama radiallahu anhu narrates. He said that shaitan comes to you at night. After you've gone to sleep, he said good night to your family. Wa Good night, see you tomorrow. Good night, Baba. Good night, Mama. Good night, honey, whatever it may be. So shaitan comes to you. And obviously, there's a symbolism here. Think about the imagery of this. He starts throwing rocks at you and sticks at you and anything to incite you against your family, to get you mad at your family. 
You ever woke up from a bad dream and you got mad at your spouse? Mad at your kids? <laughs> you're going to sleep at night and you're boiling and you're getting angry. And now, unfortunately, you can just pick up the phone and text. I'm getting really upset. I can't believe you said that. So you start boiling in your thoughts. Instead of remembering Allah at night, you're getting mad at your friend. You're getting mad at your family member. So Abu Umam radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, when that happens to you, don't get mad at your family. Don't fall for it. So while he's tying knots on your head to distract you from Allah, to get you to procrastinate, he's also saying, can you believe he said that to you? Can you believe she said that to you? Wow, you know, you should do something about that. You're boiling in bed. Like imagine if someone was standing on top of you, throwing rocks at you, poking you and saying, go do something, say something. Instead of going to sleep at night, like the Prophet taught us to clear our hearts and forgive people. And that's your entrance into Jannah. You're filling your heart with anger. And now it's just pick up a phone, send a text, make it worse. Go ahead and compound the situation. All the while, you have less time for the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This narration, Every time I read it, I think about the imagery of it. Iblis sets up his throne upon water, and then he starts to call his followers to him. The Prophet said the closest people to Iblis, when he sits on his throne on water and the shayateen are next to him, is the one who causes the most fitna. That's who Iblis loves the most. So he then starts to say, tell me what you all did. So one of them says, I did this and I did that. And Iblis says, it's nothing. Next, what did you do? So the shayateen start to tell Iblis, the corruption that they caused on the earth, the slash shaitan says, I kept on him until I caused him to split from his family. I caused the breakup. And then Iblis says, come here. He says, what a good shaitan you are. And he embraces him. I like you the best. Messed up the marriage, messed up the relationship. And that's not to say, dear brothers and sisters, that there aren't real reasons sometimes for splits. And that's not to escape responsibility when we do the things and then we say, Shaytan, he was telling his follower, didn't you hear the hadith? No, I mean, take responsibility. But that's to say how happy he becomes when he messes up families, tears us apart from each other. Don't fall for it. That's the connection between the personal, the interpersonal, the family, the community, to busy us with each other in negativity so that we can't long for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pursue Him with positivity and productivity. May Allah fill our hearts with the love of Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not give the shaitan any opening into our hearts or our lives with His whispers or His knots or His stones or whatever it is. May Allah allow us to remember Him so frequently that the shaitan finds no place within us. May Allah protect us as individuals from Him, protect our homes from Him, protect our communities from Him, and allow us to be engaged with what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 